Today we're out here in sunny Arizona with a first look at the all-new 2019 Ram 1500. Pickup trucks are already big business in America, but 2019 is bringing us a bumper crop of changes. We have an all-new Ram 1500, the all-new Silverado, we also expect to see the all-new GMC Sierra, and not to be outdone, Ford should be bringing us a new diesel engine and a hybrid drivetrain under the hood of the F-150 very soon. Depending on how you want to count things, this is either the 5th or the 15th generation of the Ram pickup truck line. That means that for 2019, this is essentially an all-new pickup truck, although the V8 engine is relatively unchanged versus last year. We do, however, get a new transmission, new body, new cab. We get an entirely different frame that is considerably stronger than before. That's what helps give us 20% higher towing and 20% higher payload capacities. We get more legroom on the inside, and we get an all-new e-torque mild hybrid system System available under the hood that'll actually be standard in the six cylinder models and optional in the V8s. Up front we get a new look that is likely going to move on to the other Ram models shortly. We have this chrome grille right here in the center and then a steel bumper below that in this model is chromed and then it's sort of an eyebrow here on top of the headlamps. That still gives us this drop fender look that we've come to expect from the Ram brand. There are three different headlamps depending on the models that you get, either LEDs or halogen high beams and low beams will be found here. These headlamps are the first tier of reflector LED headlamps. You'll notice we have an LED light strip for the turn signal and of course LED accent strips as well. At the moment, the 1500 pickup truck will be available with two different bed lengths and two different cab lengths for the 2019 model year. You'll notice that that leaves out, of course, an eight foot bed and a regular cab. If you want one of those, you will still be able to buy the previous generation Ram pickup truck in that configuration because Ram is actually building this pickup truck at the same time that they're building the previous generation. Obviously the main reason that they're doing that is because it's going to take a while in order to completely move production over to the all-new pickup truck. From the side profile you'll notice one of the big changes between this and the prior generation and that's the cab. It has grown over last year. This is about four inches longer giving this one of the largest interior volumes that you'll find in a four-door pickup truck. The increase in length and the increase in width allow this cab to easily accommodate six adults if you choose that particular model. The model we're looking at right here is the five seat version. It also allows us to have reclining rear seats. The first thing I noticed back here are these new tail lamp modules, which have amber turn signals in them, one above and one below the blind spot monitoring sensor. This is a nice touch because most pickup trucks in America simply blink a brake light for the turn signal, and that's not my preference. This is a lot clearer what's going on back here. As with the front lamp modules, these are LED modules, and you'll notice we have a continuous steel bumper right down here. That's enabled by having the blind spot monitoring sensor right up here in the tail lamp module. Reducing weight obviously improves acceleration, it decreases your braking distance, and it improves handling. But for a pickup truck, it also helps improve payload and towing ability, because the more weight you remove from the vehicle, the more you can put back in in terms of cargo or attach to the back in the form of a trailer. But for 2019, Ram chose not to go all aluminum like we see in the F-150. Now they do give us a few aluminum parts. So we have an aluminum tailgate right back here and we have an aluminum hood to help cut weight. But the rest of the weight reduction that we see for 2019, about 225 pounds total, comes in the form of high strength steel. By improving the strength of the steel, they were able to make it thinner and therefore make the vehicle lighter overall. The key takeaway here is that the bed inside and the bed outside are both still steel. So if you're concerned about the durability of an aluminum bed like we see in the F-150, then this would be a good option for you. Something that took me a little bit longer to realize is that they have actually made the bed a little bit taller or a little bit deeper, depending on how you want to look at this. The top portion of the bed is actually now in line with the windows in the Ram 1500, whereas before it was a little bit lower. That gives us a little bit more volume inside this cargo area, and interestingly enough, it also helps improve the aerodynamics. When you're watching this video, we'll determine what engines you'll see at dealer lots. Initially, the only engine available will be this 5.7 liter V8 engine. It produces 395 horsepower and 410 pound-feet of torque. It's been tweaked a little bit to expand the operation of the cylinder deactivation system that helps improve highway fuel economy and allows us to operate as a four-cylinder engine. A little bit later in the 2019 model year, we'll see the V6 engine return. It's a 3.6 liter V6 that produces 305 horsepower and 269 pound-feet of torque. That V6 will feature the standard e-torque mild hybrid system. 
The mild hybrid system can add 90 pound-feet of torque at very low RPMs, so it doesn't actually affect the peak torque of 269 pound-feet, but it does help it be a little bit faster off the line. It also enables auto start-stop and allows that start-stop system to be much smoother than what we see in other vehicles out there. A very similar e-torque system will also be later available on this 5.7 liter V8. That electric motor will produce 130 pound-feet of torque, and again, it won't add to the 410 pound-foot total. It just sort of fills in at the bottom end. If you want to know more about e-torque, there's a separate video on our channel all about that system. Both engines are mated to an 8-speed automatic transmission, sending power to the rear wheels by default, and then there are two different transfer cases you can choose from to enable four-wheel drive operation. Later in 2019, we also expect their 3-liter eco-diesel to return, power levels are likely going to be pretty similar to the current generation pickup truck, right around 240 horsepower or so. At this point, we don't have exact dates on when the 3.6 liter V6 or the 3 liter diesel will be available, but my expectation is that we should see the V6 under this hood right around summertime in America, and then probably the 3 liter diesel right towards the end of the year. I'm going to give Front Seat Comfort 9 out of 10 points. These are definitely very comfortable seats for this segment. Most of the 1500s you'll see on the dealer lot will have four-way adjustable lumbar support and a power driver's seat. We also have a two-position seat memory over there for the driver. The same range of motion in this trim for the front passenger seat, so it also gets the four-way adjustable lumbar support and a tilt telescopic steering column with a decent range of motion. The additional length that Ram added to this cab is instantly noticeable. With this front seat adjusted for me at six feet tall, you can see I have probably 18 inches of leg room left. I also have a great deal of room here in the middle. This is a very comfortable center seat and there's no hump back here. So the drivetrain is completely under the floor. This front seat is all the way back in its tracks, so easily suitable for a six foot six or taller person. I still have about six inches of leg room left and a decent amount of headroom. Now on the downside, if I actually lean all the way back and put my head against the headrest, then my head actually touches the ceiling because of the overall shape of this cab. However, most people probably don't sit quite like that, so it's still gonna be quite comfortable. Now, if you were taller, if I imitate that by sitting up here, then there's kind of an interesting cutout in the soft ceiling that I suppose acts kind of as a headrest. Uh, one of the changes for this model year are that we now have reclining second row seats, but instead of stealing room for the seats to recline in, the seat bottom cushion actually extends and the whole seat sort of hinges right there to give you that recline while sucking up just a little bit of leg room. However, because leg room is so generous, even in this maximum recline mode, I still have about two inches left with this front seat all the way back. If I pull this webbing right here, the center seat folds down to give rear passengers two cup holders and an armrest with some additional storage. As before, the rear seats flip up so you can have access to more of that area for storage. And if I walk over here to the other side and open the door and lift this up, you notice that I actually have a 22 inch roller bag hiding right there under that rear seat. This seat area is big enough that you can do that and actually still be quite comfortable in the back, although the bag does stick out just a little bit. As a company, FCA really does loving add a ton of storage in their vehicles. So we find boxes right here on each side. There's actually a little ruler there, which is kind of interesting as well. And these are watertight compartments. So you can actually pull this out and drain it if you want to. For our look at the interior, I have hopped into a top end limited trim. This interior features a two tone sort of dark navy blue and ivory interior. There's a lot of stitching detail going on on these seats that you might be able to see there on the camera. It's a little bit difficult to see that right between the perforated sections of those rear seats and the solid sections on the side. Moving to the front row, we have height adjustable shoulder belts for the driver and the front passenger and four-way adjustable ratchet style headrests. Taking a closer look at the front doors, we can see more of that real wood trim going on there. It has lines in it. You can see that stitching below. And again, the front and rear doors have a leather coating in this particular trim. The front speaker grills are laser cut stainless steel. So you can see we have that pattern right there in the top speaker grill, as well as this bottom speaker grill down here on the bottom. This has the top end Harman Kardon surround sound audio system in it. The leather wrapping and real wood trim continues on the dashboard where we find a leather wrapped upper section. Although it is worth noting that the portion of the dashboard right here around this outboard air vent is not leather covered. Although this lower portion of the dash right here where your knees or hands would interact with the dash is a leather wrapped part. The dashboard features a two glove box design. So underneath this wood panel, it says limited. We find a small glove compartment and then we find a slightly larger one below that in the dash. Moving to the center of the dashboard, we find a center channel speaker, a small storage area right there with a 12 volt power port for your radar detector, two large air vents, 
and then this absolutely enormous touchscreen infotainment system. This is optional in the Ram 1500 for 2019. Most models will get an 8-inch screen, and base models get a 5-inch screen. Let's take a quick look at the way this system operates. For greater detail, we should have a full video on this system once we can get our hands on one for a week. You'll notice that we have the same row of buttons at the bottom that we've seen in Uconnect for a while. So we have direct access to media, climate control, certain vehicle controls like our heated ventilated seats, steering wheel, the uh, steps on the side of the vehicle, backup camera, surround camera, etc. Uconnect apps, built-in factory navigation, which will go full screen, the surround camera, these buttons are rearrangeable as well, because you'll notice this takes us back over there to the controls section. And then, of course, certain settings for the system and for the vehicle. Because of the size of the screen, RAM relocated their button and knob bank that is down here in the other RAM models up to either side of the screen. So we have temperature up down for the driver and passenger. You'll find the mode buttons, fan buttons, auto control right there, front and rear defogger, etc. on either side of this particular screen. This display features Apple CarPlay and Android Auto integration, and a nice touch is that the Android Auto integration happens right up here at the top part of the screen, so you can interact with your CarPlay or Android Auto interface. To keep things more practical, you can keep your smartphone interface up top and then opt for a different uh, set of things on the bottom. For instance, the comfort controls or climate controls right like that, or you can have the Sirius XM Travel Link or your media interface down there. Of course, right now we're playing off of Apple CarPlay. As with those options on the bottom, the Home button and this Config button always stay up there. A really nice touch, of course, is this full screen map interface, which does support pinch to zoom, and you can also drag things around if you want to. The software appears to be a little bit different than what we see in the 8-inch screen, and it is very responsive. This is actually a very well-done system. Next to the screen, we see the shifter. It's a rotary style shifter. So if I put my foot on the brake, we can toggle over to drive right like that. Counterclockwise to park. This is where we find the controls for the four wheel drive system. We are in four wheel drive auto. We have two wheel drive, four high, four low, and then a neutral option. If we had the optional electronic locker, it would be located right down here. Below the infotainment screen is where we would find the integrated brake controller if our model had it. This particular model does not, but we do have the full four-corner air suspension. Below the toggle switches, we find the USB ports. There are actually four of them over here in pairs. So you'll see we have them labeled one and two. The smaller one right up top is the new USB-C port. This delivers more power than the more traditional USB port. You'll see that on a lot of Android smartphones and some tablet computers. There's also a little auxiliary input right there between the two. If I zoom out from there, there is a single slot optical disc player right there behind my phone. You can barely see it. And then zooming out from there a little bit more, you'll notice that we have a holder for your cell phone. This also features a wireless charging mat right there behind it. You can see that light blinking because my phone does not support that charging method. And then there are two phone slots, so you can have two phones parked right there. The cup holders slide forward and backward to allow you to get them out of the way or put them up here where they're a little bit more useful. This is what the key looks like. We have lock and unlock. We have a button to lower the tailgate. We have also have a button to lower the suspension since ours has that air suspension, auto start stop button, and a panic button right over there. This definitely is put together a little nicer than the keys that we saw in the previous generation RAM. The cup holders are beneath this wood door right here. They're large and can easily accommodate large takeout drinks. And then behind that, we have some additional storage. That storage area is also covered with a wooden lid, and this is where we find a smaller compartment and change holders. Between the front seats, we have a padded center armrest with more of that stitching going on, limited badging right there. Behind that, we can see two large cup holders for the rear passengers. There are quite a lot of cup holders in this truck, actually. This is a two-way opening top, so you can see that there's one way to open that, and then we can also open this with this smaller section right here. There's a USB charge port here. This car also has quite a large number of USB ports. Apparently, you can fit a full-size iPad right here and plug it in, but we have not been able to test that ourselves. Beneath that, we have a very large and deep storage compartment. You could very easily put a gallon of milk under there. And this is what it looks like when that slides backwards and forwards. Of course, under that compartment, we have some more storage up front as well and a 12-volt power port. The design of the instrument cluster is quite similar to last year's Ram pickup truck. We have a full-color LCD in the middle that gives us a wide variety of different vehicle information, including navigation turn-by-turn -turn directions, fuel economy, extra gauges, that sort of thing. And then we have physical elements for the speedometer and the tachometer on either side. You'll also find physical elements for the engine temperature and, of course, the fuel level over there on the right. Since we're in the top end limited trim, we have real wood trim on the top of the steering wheel. The wheel itself is a four-spoke design, and we still find the infotainment controls on the back of the wheel. You'll find track forward and backward on the left, volume up and down over there on the right. 
I've hopped inside a Laramie Longhorn so you can see the difference. We get this tooled leather here, so you can see we have this sort of crocodile skin patterning going on right there on the leather. We still have the perforated center sections because these seats are still ventilated. Instead of luxury car style wood, we find this rougher grained real wood trim on the doors. The doors are still leather wrapped, so you can see we have that charcoal leather section up there with the contrasting stitching. Moving over to the dashboard, that Longhorn logo is actually burnt into the wood itself. You can see again that leather wrapped dashboard there. And that wood lid is for that smaller glove compartment. We also have leather wrapping the lower portion of the dashboard to help give the interior a more premium feel. The center console is quite distinctive with that Laramie Longhorn logo there and again more of that crocodile skin styled tooled leather. And then we find more of that real wood trim over here in the center console. This is again the lid for the cup holders. There's more real wood trim on that steering wheel and as we zoom into the instrument cluster you'll notice we have this sort of eccentric styling there around those bezels for the tachometer and the speedometer. These are meant to look sort of like high-end watches or sort of men's jewelry. The backs of the front seats have a belt buckle styled clasp to them right there and the center section of these floor mats can be removed so that way you can either use these as all-weather floor mats or more like summer floor mats that have the fabric. When it comes to the numbers, of course, we haven't been able to test this on our own home turf, but our 0-60 to 60 acceleration score was basically the same as the last generation RAM. That's quite logical, of course, because the engine is putting out the same amount of power, and even though we get a refreshed transmission, the basics of the transmission are essentially the same, so the gear ratios involved are very similar. Gear ratios are very important to keep in mind because there are so many different ways you can configure your pickup truck that acceleration does change based on the options that you choose. Not only will some of those option packages affect the axle ratios involved, but they'll also affect the weight of the vehicle. Now this is a little bit lighter than the last generation Ram, so I expect this to stop a little bit shorter than that model as well. Although again, we haven't been able to test this at home. When it comes to overall handling ability, the Ram 1500 is definitely one of the more fun pickup trucks in America. That's thanks to the overall suspension design we find in this vehicle. Ram was the first company to bring a full four-corner air suspension to the half-ton pickup truck segment, and that continues for 2019. Not only does the air suspension allow us to vary the ride height of this 1500, so right now I'm in normal, I can go all the way down to a parking height that will lower the vehicle at all four corners down to the ground. Or I can also choose an off-road mode that will raise the vehicle significantly above the normal ride height. But in addition to being able to adjust the ride, it also allows us to have a softer ride because the air suspension both supports the vehicle and it functions as the vehicle's dampers. The other big benefit to having an air suspension in your vehicle is that it helps the suspension adjust back to the middle of its travel. If you have a lot of payload in the back or if you're towing a trailer with a heavy tongue weight and the suspension is jammed all the way to the ground towards the bottom of its travel, there's not as much suspension movement left and that really does affect the way a vehicle handles. By returning the suspension to the middle of its travel, you can really improve a vehicle's handling, especially in emergency maneuver type situations. Now since this air suspension has reasons to exist beyond just a comfortable ride, it has that practical application, Ram does make it available in all trims of the 1500, which is another unusual twist. So you won't find this just in the top end trims, you actually find this even available in the tradesman trim, which is the least expensive option. Logically, maintenance on a vehicle with a full four-corner air suspension like this should be slightly higher long-term. However, I think it's a worthy trade-off to get the excellent ride quality and, of course, the load leveling ability. Now, even if you don't get the air suspension, we still have a coil spring setup in the back, which is a little unusual for a pickup truck, that helps this vehicle deliver the best ride in this segment easily, even if you don't get the full four-corner air suspension. One of the big things that Ram's been talking about with this generation, the 1500, is the quiet ride. And I can say that this is a very, very quiet interior. Even in the model that we're testing, which is not a top-end trim, this model right here that we're driving is a bighorn trim. Ram got to this very quiet cabin by doing a few things. Obviously, the tires are a big part of this. They also put a lot of sound deadening in this vehicle, but they've also given us an active noise cancellation system. So we actually have microphones here in the headliner on this side and on that side. They're picking up the sounds in the cabin and playing a sound canceling vibration to make the interior quieter. In addition to that, we have basically computer controlled shake weights, for lack of a better term, attached to the frame of this Ram 1500. Those counteract the vibrations of the engine, whether it's an eight cylinder mode or four cylinder mode, and it helps make the cabin quieter. Now don't worry, of course, as you're accelerating in the Ram, we still get that excellent V8 exhaust note out of the back. 
if you opt for the V6 engine, we still get active noise cancellation in the cabin, but we don't get those active mass modules attached to the frame of the vehicle. So in theory, that model may actually be a little bit louder out on the road, but we haven't been able to test it. While we're talking about models that we haven't been able to drive, we also haven't been able to test the model with the e-torque system. It's important to remember that e-torque does not add any additional peak torque to the vehicle. It simply fills in torque here and there to give a smoother experience, regenerate electricity back into the battery, and allow the engine to start and stop very smoothly. Fuel economy is likely going to be the highest in those e-torque equipped models, but they're unlikely to accelerate faster than the regular models. So if you get the V8 right here, or you pay $800 extra dollars for that e-torque system, acceleration is likely going to be the same. Fortunately, not all of the fuel economy improvements for the 2019 Ram are based on that auto start stop system. This is also the most aerodynamic pickup truck that we have in this category and that really helps improve highway fuel economy. And they've gone back to the drawing board on some of the drivetrain components to make them more efficient as well. So we have a slightly more efficient transmission, more efficient rear axle, etc. Obviously, you'll have to wait until we get our hands on one of these for a complete week for testing. But at the moment, our fuel economy average out here in Arizona with the air conditioning on all day and a mix of urban and suburban driving has been coming in right around 19 miles per gallon, which actually I find pretty impressive for a four-wheel drive equipped pickup truck. Highway fuel economy has been especially impressive in this Ram. You can definitely notice that this vehicle is spending more time in four-cylinder mode than the last generation Ram, and overall, those fuel economy numbers seem to be higher thanks to the aero improvements that we find in this model. Of course, the most efficient version of this Ram 1500 will be the turbo diesel when it becomes available, and the V6 will slot somewhere in between. Bearing in mind that Ram has yet to announce the full line of the 2019 Ram 1500, we do have final pricing on the models that I'm showing you on the screen. $31,695 seems like a big increase over the 2017 model year vehicle, but remember that the Tradesman in 2019 form starts as a rear wheel drive quad cab vehicle. The Laramie trim is likely going to be one of the most popular trims of the Ram 1500. That starts just under $41,000. That's also where the V8 becomes standard in the Ram lineup. That means, of course, that while you will be able to find the Tradesman model right away on dealer lots in the next month or so, you won't find V6 Tradesmans because the V6 engine is going to happen a little bit later. So the base price you're seeing on your screen is for the base V6 model, not the V8 model, which is what you'll actually find on dealer lots right away. The V8 engine is essentially a $1,200 upgrade, and then later this year, you'll be able to add the e-torque mild hybrid system for an extra $800. The increase in the destination charge for 2019 seems a little excessive, to be honest, because most vehicle destination charges out there are around $1,000, and this is about $700 higher than the average. As usual, you will have to wait until we can get our hands on the Ram 1500 for a complete week, so we can put it through our usual battery of tests, tell you what it's like to live with, and of course, give you direct comparisons to the competition. But the moment I can tell you that Ford and General Motors definitely have a tough fight on their hands because the Ram 1500 has one of the best interiors in this segment. The healthy V8 engine has long been a very reliable companion. It's relatively fuel efficient for a V8 in this segment as well. And the eight speed ZF automatic transmission really is an excellent towing partner. Payload and towing numbers have gone up for 2019, which is a good thing and likely will match what we see out of the Chevy Silverado. Will be a little bit less than the Ford F-150, but comparably priced, the tow figures and the payload figures in the Ram should be very competitive to that Ford. It's worth noting that if you don't really feel like buying into some of the latest in fuel saving technologies like smaller turbocharged engines or General Motors' new skip fire engine management software, which will allow the engine to turn off up to seven cylinders at a time, the Ram 1500 really would be the best option for you. Ram has decided to make the e-torque mild hybrid system standard in the 2019 Ram, but it's optional on the V8 engine. So you can get a V8 Ram 1500 with just their cylinder deactivation system, which we have seen for quite some time and has proved very reliable in the 5.7 liter Hemi engine. And of course their eight speed automatic transmission, which is also tried and true. Outside the Ram, you really have few options if you want to avoid those technologies. You can get a 5 liter V8 in the Ford F-150, but only in limited configurations. You also will find naturally aspirated V8 engines in some of the Japanese competitors, but they don't have the same variety of pickup truck bodies and cabs, etc. that we do see in the Ram, the Silverado, and in the Ford. With that in mind, be sure and check out our related Ram 1500 videos that you'll also find on my channel. Be sure and hit that subscribe button down there below the screen. Find us over at facebook.com slash alexnautos and definitely put the Ram 1500 on your shopping list for 2019. I'll see you next week.